Now, and Ghana's president, John Dramani Mahama, is in the Gambia in an attempt to persuade President Yahya Jame to step down after he lost the election. Nigerian President Mohamedou Buhari is expected to be joined by Liberian leader Ellen Johnson Sirleaf, Sierra Leone's Ernest Bai Koroma, and Ghana's John Dramani Mahama, who himself lost an election last week to reason with the Gambian leader to hand over power to the opposition winner, Adam Barrow. After initially accepting, accepting defeat at the end of last week, Mr. Jame claimed he no longer accepted the result and asked for a new poll to be run by a God-fearing electoral commission. President-elect Adam Barrow has welcomed plans for the leaders to visit and is reportedly going to meet them too. And I would want to go straight to the phone lines now to speak to the Director of Academic Affairs of the Ghana Armed Forces Command and Staff College, Dr. Vladimir Enchidanso. And I uh, would also want to find out from you whether the, the ECOWAS heads of state's mission to the Gambia will succeed in persuading Mr. Jame to rescind his decision. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Vladimir Enchidanso, and uh, welcome to the program. Inviting me to the program. Hello, Dr. Vladimir Chudanso. Hello. Yes, good afternoon and thank you very much for joining us. Good afternoon to you and your listeners too. Right, uh, to start with, um, a lot of people were applauding Mr. Jame for initially accepting to, you know, uh, step down. But this time around, his initial decision has seemed to be thrown out. And with what is happening, do you think the initial decision by some ECOWAS heads to go to that country would be able to help him change his mind? Certainly, that is what diplomacy is all about. Uh, it is a preventive form of diplomacy so that you avoid any bloodshed, you avoid anything untoward. And so it is a wise thing to do. Secondly, in the West African community, we have protocols uh, on the um, change of governments. Uh, I think what Jaya Jame has done amounts to a coup d'etat. And so the only thing we can do is first to use diplomacy, preventive one, and then to use some kind of coercive diplomacy. And so it's a wise decision that the ECOWAS leaders have taken. And if it, if it fails in terms of if dialogue fails, what other processes do you think could be used? Well, it's, it's a long chain. Uh, already you see that the world community is also on board. And the first thing will be sanctions, isolation, uh, threats, and then finally military action. But that is the last resort. I don't expect that there's, there's going to be a military action. But what Yajame is doing is, um, is, is, is a bargain for his exit. Uh, and I think he's not handling it properly. So that's all he needs. He is actually enticing the international community to come to him and negotiate his exit with a promise uh, for Baru not to persecute him. And that's what exactly he's doing. And we're told that Mr. Jamis' stance, um, which had to do with the fact that he, uh, he changed his mind after initially uh, accepting defeat, is because of a statement made by a member of the uh, Gambian opposition team to the effect that he, Mr. Jame, will be taken to the International Criminal Court at The Hague for trial. Taking into account that uh, that particular statement has been made, do you think that then he has every right not to step down or he is worsening his condition? In actual fact, whatever right you're talking about does not exist. He doesn't have any right, absolutely. The Gambian people have spoken, and whoever is making any comment about him or whatever, it has no uh, impact on what the Gambians are saying. They're saying, we voted for a new person, get off. But as I'm saying, it's because of the threat, he's the fear of the unknown, that he's using this as a bag. He's a smart guy. What he's doing is to also create a situation where that situation needs to be solved first. And therefore, he's creating a situation where people will come in and he would negotiate his exit. I bet you one of the cards or his best Trump card will be, okay, I'm, I'm ready to, to rescind my decision, but promise me also that there will be no persecution. So exactly that is what he's doing. So it is a deliberate ploy to at least, you know, get him out of the clause of the ICC if he's able to negotiate properly. Exactly. He will, he will go, he's going to negotiate with that, with that bargaining chip. What he's doing is now is that, okay, he's the sitting president. Elections have been held. I don't uh, uh, recognize the elections anymore. 
And then you try to tell him, recognize it. So what you give in place is a part of diplomatic ploy we always use. So he's coming in to bargain his exit. That's all he's doing. So we rather, knowing very well what this is, should be very careful as to what we also take onto the table. And I believe that if you really want to solve the Gambian problem, then we would have to give him some kind of space, a breathing space. Because the Gambian problem is intrinsically linked with the Casamance problem in, the, uh, in, in, in uh, Senegal. Mm. And therefore, it's a dicey situation. And again, we don't have to use any force. You're a small country of less than about 4 million uh, population. We need to help them. They need help. They need help. Okay. Jaya Jami himself needs serious help. And I think what we can do is to use diplomacy to get him to accept. We are grateful for your time and your insight into this particular development. Uh, Dr. Vladimir Chidanso um, is the Director of Academic Affairs at the Ghana Armed Forces Command and Staff College and uh, has been sharing his thoughts on this development. Me